Cuttercast family, what is up? Welcome to uh, another episode of the Cuttercast. I wanted to show you something at the beginning of this one. So I've been using these, the Easton Axis 5mm arrow. It's a, I shoot a 340 spine, that's what my bow likes, so that's what I shoot. And I've loved this arrow, I've shot it the last three years. Shoots really great, tunes really great to, to the bows that I've had. It's a full carbon arrow and it does awesome. Um, I did want to try their new four millimeter axis. It's the long range hunter, I think is what they call it. Um, but I, I've heard from my, my bow, my bow professionals that it, it hasn't tuned very well to a lot of the bows that they've tried to tune it to. And so my Easton, my Easton homies uh, recommended shooting this Pro Comp arrow. It's a four millimeter Pro Comp. It's a, it's a target arrow. It's aluminum in, inner and then it's wrapped in carbon on the out, outside. It's five grains heavier than my, my other arrow. So my total arrow weight was 422. Total arrow weight with this Pro Comp is 427. And the front of center is a little bit more. It's, uh, it's got a little bit more front of center than the arrow I've been shooting. So I'm here, I'm at 60 yards right now. I figured close up, it might not be terribly different, but I'd really know how, uh, how much of a difference those five grains and a little bit more front of center will make on my arrow dropping at 60 yards. So I'm gonna shoot at 60 yards and see how much lower they hit if they're hitting significantly lower, I might just finish out the season with the Easton Axis. And if they're close, then I'll just adjust my sight. That's why these ones have broad heads on them because we've been hunting. Tis the season. Um, but I also, I'm, I'm using the Garmin A1 sight. It's not the A1 or yeah, the A, A1X or whatever that allows you to have different arrow files on board. So if that was the case, I could just shoot that arrow in and keep both arrows and use them interchangeably. But I'm not special enough to, to have that, uh, that Garmin sight. So it's pretty simple to adjust though. It's just like another sight if it's hitting low, you just tell it it's hitting low and it will adjust it. But let's see how low it's hitting right now. These arrows, have been, I've got five of the pro comps that I shot at the bow shop in Nephi, shot them through paper. So I knocked tune them through paper and they are all on, these five are. So let's see how low they uh, hit here at 60 yards. It could be a bad idea. They could drop significantly and I could regret this decision, but I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna find out. So the first three actually felt a little shaky. The last two felt good. We'll see. I, I know one of them's got to be close to uh, the bullseye because it sounded really soft. But the other one, I, shake, I shanked one to the right. I know that. So these are my first three. And these are my last two. And those ones I felt best about. So I'm actually going to go back to 60 yards and shoot that again. And, and really take my time, really relax. They're, I don't think they're low. I think they might be dead on actually. Yeah, so the one, to the right. That one I knew was happening, but that's not terrible. It's like, gosh, an inch and a half low. That one's me dropping my arm, but an inch and a half low, that's not a big adjustment. That's something I can definitely get shot in pretty quick. Let's shoot it at like 40 and see how far off it is. All right, 
40 felt really good. It sounded good. My target's soft in the middle and they all sounded soft except one. So I don't know how much we'll need to adjust 40 yards. So if 40 is good, then I am assuming everything 40 and in is good as well. And I probably shouldn't make assumptions. So it's probably 50 and beyond. Maybe I have to start making adjustments, which is like superb. That's wonderful. That's not that big of a deal. And it's not a lot either. It's like a couple inches maybe. Sweet. I think these pro comps are, uh, I think they're gonna work out great. All right, so I think these pro comp arrows are actually gonna work out really well. I'm, I'm super shocked. We didn't have to tune my bow to them or anything. They just, I mean, at the bow shop, they not tuned really fast and no tearing, that was awesome. And then it looks like out to 40, I'm, I'm solid. I haven't shot 50, but I know at 60, they're about an inch and a half low, which I don't think is me, but it could be. Maybe I'm dropping my hand a little bit, um, but they're consistently about an inch and a half to two inches low. So from, from about 50 on, I'll come back up here sometime and get the Garmin uh, fine tuned to them. And then we'll see maybe before the end of the season, we'll have some animals down with the pro comps. Um, but we'll see. But for now, I wanna go back to the studio and show you guys my Dominator setup. A lot of people have questions about the Dominator. It is our most popular bedroll. And so I wanna go back and show you my Dominator and how I have it set up and how I like to use it and uh, how, how you could use it too. So let's head back to the studio and uh, do just that. Come here, Bertha. All right, Cuttercast family. So we're back in the studio and I have before me on this table, my Dominator 2.0 bedroll. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, wow, that's large. And yeah, that's kind of the whole point. It's large and it's in charge. And if you're going to get a Dominator bedroll, the whole point of it is comfort. You're not getting it to save weight. You're not getting it to save size. You're getting it so that when you show up wherever you end up, you can throw out on the ground, in the bed of your truck, um, on a cot, in a wall tent, wherever you show up, you can throw out and sleep like a king or queen for that matter, right? I mean, it's really large. If you think this one's big though, you really need to check out Father Wisdom's. His puts mine to shame. I, it might be hard to believe, but it's probably close to twice the size uh, of my Dominator bedroll. But I have a lot in here, as you should. I've got my three inch foam pad. I have a really plush Teton sleeping bag. Um, I've got my air pillow. The mesh screen is in here. So that stuff's in the mesh. And then I've got the full length pole system and I believe the standard pole system in there too. But I'll kind of, uh, we'll just unbuckle it here. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, pardon the fact that it's dirty. It gets used quite a bit. And I, I haven't unrolled it and brushed it off since the last time I used it, so. Let me unzip it. Now with the full length pull system, if you're gonna run the full length pull system, it does have pros, right? Holding the canvas up off you will help the canvas breathe a lot better. Um, if it's cold and wet, it keeps the canvas off of you, which is, is preferable for some people. I actually like the weight on me. Um, but it keeps that, that cold canvas off of you. If you're running a down bag and you don't want the canvas to smash uh, the loft of the down, which I haven't seen a huge problem with, but if you wanna completely eliminate that problem, then the full length pull system will keep the canvas off of you so, so you, that you don't have that problem. Um, the standard pull system will work with the mesh screen as well. 
The other thing with the full length pull system is setting it up is going to take a little bit more time and a little bit more effort. So with the standard pull system, you'd never need to unzip it all the way like this, but it just makes it easier with the full length pull system to do so. So as you can see, I've got the mesh screen in here that if it's hot weather, I can leave my bedroll unzipped like this. I can leave it unzipped all on one side and more zipped up on the other and not worry about bugs or insects and stuff getting into my bed or bugging me while I'm taking a nap or sleeping at night. Get this unzipped. So here's my Teton bag. It's fairly plush. I've got my climate air pillow. I'm not a huge pillow guy. That's the other thing that you can do. One of the reason Father Wisdoms is so big is he has probably a couple plush pillows in there. I know he's got two sleeping bags in there. He's got his foam pad and he likes to rock an air pad underneath his foam pad and he just blows it up a little bit, almost like waterbed -y blow up. And then with that and the foam pad, he swears by it. He says it's the most comfortable thing and he's got a lot of experience, so I would believe him. Now, my full length pole systems are in here. The, the mesh screen has a built in, built in grommets for the full length pole system. If you want to run it and have the option of the standard pull system, all you have to do is put your standard pull pad in underneath your foam pad like you would normally and just leave it in there. And then you can use your standard pulls or the full length pulls, whatever you prefer. So that's kind of what I have inside it. On my foam, Landon, I don't know if you can get that it's super dirty. It probably needs to be washed, but I have a twin mattress cover over my foam pad. We, we're going to come out with some, hopefully sooner than later, but you can also run to like Walmart and get a twin mattress cover for four bucks. It fits over the foam pad wonderfully and it keeps the foam clean and it's a lot more comfortable. The foam can have that kind of sticky foam feeling to it. But let me set this up and I'll show you how it looks set up. So on this table with the full length pull systems, forgive me, okay? It might be a little more tricky than on the ground is, but we'll get it set up. These just all snap together like your standard tent pole. So with the full length pole system, I like to do, get that down. I like to do the back and one of the sides on each side. And hopefully the pressure of the foam We'll hold that in. It's a little different doing it when it's as, as tall as you. That. And then since you have that side already in, it's easier to get these sides in. It's got those built-in grommets, like I said. So that's the full length pole system set up. And then you can just throw the mesh right on over. It like that. So a lot of people ask, um, so if it's hot outside with the dominator, speaking of the dominator, like if it's hot outside, <laughs> you might not be able to see me behind that. What do you do? And it's super simple, you just unzip it. Just unzip the dominator and let it breathe a lot more. You let more airflow in and sleep comfortably. If it's cold, zip it up more. But on each side, it's got these weather flaps, like all our bed rolls. So even in, in really bad weather, you should leave it unzipped that 15 inches. And if you keep that tucked in and this pushed out, the water will run right over it. But if it's cold weather, zip it up more. If it's too warm, unzip it. It's, it's a super simple 
concept. The full length pull system is fitted to the dominator. So it does get more snug. One of the benefits to the full length pull system that I didn't mention before is that the way the pull, pull system sets the canvas up is in a heavy rainstorm, it just allows the water to run straight off, which you're, you don't get with the standard pull system, right? Because the canvas is gonna be laying flat, which is fine because the canvas has a water resistant coating on the outside and then it's got the waterproof breathable polyurethane coating on the inside. So water can sit on it for days and it's not gonna come through. It's just, you don't have the weight of wet canvas and pools of water on you. And you lose the chance, the zipper's not waterproof. That's why it's buried in these weather flaps. If it's laying flat and you haven't kicked it out to the sides, water could pool on it and eventually start wicking through or running through that zipper and going inside. And that's not a possibility with the full length pull system. So uh, that's a cool feature about the pull system, but it does take a little longer to set up. But if you prefer it, it does make it quite the cocoon of comfort on the inside um, if you use it. But I'm gonna take the pull system down and uh, I'll show you how to roll it up. A lot of people want to know how to roll it up to get it tight. Everybody thinks that um, I have the keys, and maybe I do because I have rolled hundreds and hundreds of bed rolls before. And so I'll teach you how to roll it up and get it as tight as you can with, with all the gear that you have inside of it. But first, you got to take the pull system back down. Now you can usually undo one side and the bottom and then almost pull them out instead of having to unzip it all the way again. They come down like that and you can just pull them out. All right, guys, I figured I might as well show you the standard pull system too. Well, I have it up here on the table. So took the full length pull system down, put it away. The standard pull system's a little, it's a little quicker to set up. It's a little more simple. When you set up a standard pull system, I noticed some people, I've seen them when I, I've been with them, they'll like undo their poles, hear a bunch of them snap together, but there will be one with the insert actually showing a little bit. And then they go to put it together. Sometimes they get away with it and it doesn't break. But if that insert, any of the inserts are sticking out and you go to bend, it puts too much torque on the aluminum and you'll break the pole. So just make sure that they're all inserted. And I kind of do the same. Same thing as with the standard or the full length pull system as the standard. Make sure they're in the grommet. Have your standard pull system mat or pad underneath the foam. The foam puts enough pressure on it. It should hold the poles in the grommets. Then you just find the other end and push them in. As you can see, it's uh, significantly faster than the full length pull system and it works great i i like it i use the standard pull system probably more but that's just personal preference sometimes i don't even use a pull system just because i'm fine with the canvas laying right on top of me actually i think it's super comfortable we'll let you see what this looks like and that pole system probably could be pushed up a little further so it's over your head, but you can see it covers, 
It covers pretty much down to most people's waist, if not more. It could be scooted up so it's a little bit more over your head directly. But you can see with the standard pole system, down here the canvas lays more flat, which is fine. Again, you're not gonna get wet if there's a huge puddle on this. It's if this side is laying like this and there somehow develops a puddle in there and that ripple and it fills up, it could start coming through the zipper and in, and then you'll fill it on your foam, right? Because the foam will wick water big time. So you just got to, if it's raining out when you're inside, kick your legs out once to make sure that those are pushed out and you should be good to go. But that's kind of the dominator with the standard pull system. You can see it works with the, the mesh screen just fine. I mean, it can do the exact same thing. Again, if it's hot or if you feel too warm, unzip it and throw it off. Look at that. You could sleep like a king under the stars, no bugs. Same thing on this one that I do with the full length pull system. I usually just go on one side and undo that side. And then sometimes they'll just wiggle right out. Don't have to unzip it as much. So that's the standard and full length pull system with the Dominator. Now let's roll it up. Let's show you how to roll it up. All right, so you just woke up from the most amazing night's sleep and you need to roll your bedroll up because you're gonna hop in the truck and drive a couple miles to check a different area or to glass or cause you're gonna go to a lake and you're gonna go fishing and whatever, right? So here's your bedroll. Your, uh, your bedroll's laid out, sprawled out. You just put down the pole system, zipped it up. You need to remember a couple things. All the seams have been seam sealed unless you have an older one if you have an older Dominator 2.0, all the seams have been taped except this, this zipper seam. So that seam needs to be seam sealed. If you have a new Dominator 2.0, we moved the weather flap above the zipper so even that seam is taped. So although air moves through the canvas, slowly when you're rolling it up, you're pushing against the air faster than it can es escape through those, um, the pores of the canvas. And so you always leave, a key is to always leave your bedroll unzipped at the bottom, like three to four inches, just leave it unzipped at the bottom. That will let the air escape as you're rolling it up, which you're gonna need, or it will fill up like, kind of like a balloon and slowly let out. The second thing is, is you have all this excess can canvas on the sides and you make your bedroll look more like, um, oh, like a, what's those rolls that you have like you cut and use for sandwiches? A croissant. You make, you make your bedroll look more like a croissant than like a rolled up bedroll when you leave these flaps just out there. So like I showed you on the summit bedroll, you pull all this excess can canvas in and as you roll it down, you're going to continue to pull it in so that it's nice and tight. You can see that, I mean, that's 17 inches of sidewall that you wanna pull in. And then the last thing would be have your pull systems up here at the top because it gives you a good start to, to, to pinch the foam. If I'm going to store it long term, I roll it loose because that's better for the foam pad. If you're going to just throw it in the back of the truck and run out, or if you're leaving to go out and you want as much to conserve as much space as possible, then you gotta roll it as tight as possible. So you saw all the stuff in there. You got to start pretty good. And the key is your knees. Like use your knees, pull those sides in. I use my hands on the sides and as you roll, it kind of shoves it down into itself and it keeps it really tight. But the, 
The opening down here allows that air to escape. You just roll. Pull those sides in as you roll. Always use your knees. You can hear that air escape. I like to cinch one side and then the other and leave the middle last. Make sure when you click the buckles that they are both, both the teeth on the male end have clicked into the female end. I've noticed some customers will break a buckle because they'll go to click it in and only one is actually in. And then they'll put all this torque and pressure on the buckle and it will turn it sideways and can break it. And if you want it neat, you can pull the strap around like this and tuck it into itself. But there you have it. That's how I roll up my bed rolls. You saw all the stuff that's in it. There's a lot in there, a lot of comfort but it rolls up like relatively small for all that's in there and for all the comfort and love that you can feel every night as you sleep outdoors with a canvas cutter dominator 2.0 bedroll. I hope that was helpful. I hope maybe you saw something or learned something from my setup that you can use on yours and hopefully learning how to roll it up <laughs> helps you compress your bedroll a lot more so it takes up less space um, again, but that's really not the purpose when it comes to the Dominator. Other ones, the Fortress, which we'll look at later, it was designed to take up less room, to be lighter, to be a smaller, but still heavy duty option, bedroll option. So hopefully that was helpful. I hope you liked it and uh, we'll see you again later. CutterCast family, thank you so much for watching and listening wherever you might be. I hope it's content that's worth your time. And if you have any questions about the Dominator, go ahead and leave them in the comment sections of this video below. Maybe we'll do another Dominator bedroll episode and answer your questions specifically. And until next time, bye.